I think there'll be a recommitment to free trade, but also an emphasis on fair trade, a trade that is beneficial to all countries, that doesn't seek advantage one country over another. There's been a lot of focus on trade and goods. That is important. We have a deficit there in the United States. I hope there'll be more attention on trade in services where we have a surplus, particularly financial services. In terms of financial services, how difficult will it be to set up some sort of meeting, not only with what the U.S. wants, but also with what the U.K. is doing, given the Brexit talks and everything else that's been happening? Well, really good question, Becky. Uh, earlier, um, we received the report of the Financial Stability Board that was set up when leaders first met in Washington in the G20 in 2008 at the height of the financial crisis. Uh, the Financial Stability Board has as a goal safer, simpler, and fairer regulation looking toward what they call dynamic resilience. I think there's been good progress made. I'm, I'm not sure it's much simpler. I think we need to find ways both in this large forum and then in bilateral negotiations between the U.S. and Europe to talk about ways to lower barriers to financial services and, by the way, particularly because of dramatic changes like Brexit and other events on the global uh, economic agenda. I mean, it sounds like a, a nice plan to have these talks and to try and make things happen, but we know how tense some of these relationships have gotten. Angela Merkel planning on, uh, on trying to make a big deal about the United States pulling out of the Paris Accords. W with messages like that being sent, how, how much do you think will actually get accomplished here? Again, another good question. I think the real key thing on the G20 and these other multilateral forums is to move away from rhetoric and communiques that are dozens of pages long yeah. to results. Let's just come up with a one-page action plan that can be measurable and reviewable on a going forward basis. If you take a look at climate, for example, although the U.S. was criticized years ago for not being part of Kyoto, by the way, either in Republican or Democratic administrations, and now the Paris Accord, we're the only country that really is in line with both Kyoto and Paris agreement levels, in part because we've recommitted to the kind of clean energy ranging from shale to nuclear that others have abandoned. So I think it's going to be an important issue on the table. But at the end of the day, let's focus on results, not rhetoric. Let's measure uh, not how well we sound in the communique and in our press conferences, but what we do on a going forward basis to produce results. You know, that, that's a great message, but how likely do you think that that is something that uh, other nations kind of sign on to? I mean, I haven't heard anybody lay out that we're the only ones who are actually in alliance or, or in line with what Kyoto lays out. That how, how do you think this will actually turn into something that, that we do see in key results? How likely is that? Well, I think that is both the challenge and the opportunity for the president. He'll be in that large group of 20 global leaders. Um, I think they'll talk that range of issues that you mentioned, trade and investment, climate. They'll get into famine areas in Africa, interestingly, women's economic empowerment, broad range of issues. And I think it's important for the president and all the world leaders to move from that level of rhetorical flourish down to facts and details. And at the end of the day, what is the G20 about? It's about jumpstarting the global economy, getting us in the U.S., for example, growing back closer to 3% than 2%. Europe closer to 2 than 1%. Japan moving up. China moving up. That's an important part of it. The other thing, of course, that the G20 was set up to do 20 years ago was to look over the horizon. What might be that next financial crisis? And it's been 20 years, for example, since Asia has had a financial mm -hmm. crisis. A lot of uncertainty and instability there, including on the political side. What are the things that G20, the Financial Stability Board, can put in place now to anticipate and hopefully obviate that next crisis? Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.